Good morning everyone. It's just wonderful to be here with you once again. I trust God that you and your loved ones are well. Continuing our amazing journey with the children of Israel to the Promised Land, we come to Exodus chapter 24 verses 1 to 18. We are at the Mount Sinai where God gave the children of Israel the law through Moses, which we can read in chapters 20 to 23. God graciously and powerfully saved his people and brought them out of the land of Egypt. But the people were accustomed to a life of slavery under their Egyptian rulers. And now, God was preparing them to leave behind their slave mentality in order to become their own nation, God's own nation. The title of today's talk is Walking with a Holy God. When I read the title, Walking with a Holy God, immediately I felt that God's, God was speaking to me. I heard God asking me a question. Are you? Are you walking with me in purity and holiness? The question God asked me wasn't steeped in condemnation, no. His question came steeped in love, steeped in compassion and gentleness. I have to confess that I was taken aback by the question and I had to stop everything I was doing to allow the Lord to go deeper into my heart to help me to realize that I wasn't walking purity and holiness with him. Instead, I was allowing my behavior, my actions and my thoughts to be guided by my own flesh and not by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord for through his amazing love, I was able to confess my sins and weaknesses and be brought back on track in my walk with our Holy Father. Thank you, Lord. So that's why I am speaking to you about holiness today. And I pray that you will be inspired to walk in purity with the Lord. Amen. So going back to Exodus 24, God arranged a meeting with his people at the foot of Mount Sinai so that the covenant could be sealed by the two parties, God and his people. Verse 3 says, When Moses went and told the people all the Lord's words and laws, they responded with one voice, Everything the Lord has said, we will do. But my my question is, did they? Did they do everything the Lord said? No, they didn't. We know that. Yet, I firmly believe that they were sincere when they made that vow. They didn't obey all the Lord's law and commands because they didn't have the power within them to obey. But we know that the Mosaic Covenant was only a shadow of the much greater and permanent new covenant that was to come. Let's look at four symbolic acts Moses performed when sealing the covenant between God and his people. And let's look at these four things in the light of the new covenant and what they mean to us today. The first symbolic act was the sacrifice, verses 4 to 6. Moses built an altar and innocent bulls were killed. They were sacrificed as offerings to God. Moses took half the blood and sprinkled it over the altar. Verse 8 tells us that he also sprinkled the blood on the people uniting the two parties to the agreement. Also, the blood sprinkled on the people was a symbol that their sins were forgiven. 
they were made holy in the presence of the Holy God for that meeting. Under the new covenant, God arranged for us to come to the foot of the cross. On the cross, God, on our behalf, sacrificed his one and only innocent son, Jesus. So it's crucial for us to understand that our journey under the new covenant of grace that God has made with us starts at the cross. Our journey in walking holiness with our holy God begins when we accept Jesus as our Savior. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 says, And walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. It is the blood of Jesus spilled for us on the cross that washes away our sins and makes us holy. Hallelujah. And God's inv invitation for us today is come to the cross and accept his forgiveness and salvation in Jesus. Amen. The second symbolic act was the testimony. Verse 4. Moses set up 12 stone pillars representing the 12 tribes of Israel. These 12 stones would be a visual reminder to the people of the agreement they made with God. The stones were to be witnesses to the whole congregation of their part they played in that agreement. The 12 stone pillars were there so that the people wouldn't forget the covenant they made with God. But under the new covenant, we ourselves become a living testimony. Our strength, our power to obey God comes from Christ. Amen. The power for us to live a holy life comes from Jesus. And it is the Holy Spirit who makes us bold to be witnesses of what the Lord Jesus has done in our lives. Amen. In the world around us, our families, our friends, our neighbors and colleagues aren't maybe reading the Bible, but, and it's a big but, they are reading us. Once we have accepted Jesus as our Savior, we become an open letter signed by God. And it's only by God's grace and power that we can display to others His love and faithfulness. As we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everybody. Many years ago in Brazil, when I was married to my first husband, I decided to leave him because my husband was very unfaithful and sometimes dangerously violent. I knew that in those circumstances, the Bible permits divorce. However, one day when I was reading the Bible and praying, the Lord spoke to me very clearly saying, If you leave your husband, he will die. I knew in my heart that what the Lord was really saying was, My husband would die spiritually. But I didn't listen. I was determined to leave him. I had had enough. So, together with some good friends, I traveled many hours to speak to a pastor who had the gift of prophecy. We all wanted prayers for different things we were going through at that time. But when my friend asked the pastor to pray for us, he looked at me and said, I don't need to pray for you. The Lord has told you what to do. So go and obey him. I was shocked. That wasn't what I wanted to hear at all. But I realized that being holy implies to follow Jesus in humility, 
doing the will of the Father and not my own will. So by God's grace, I stayed with my husband and five months before he died in a tragic accident, he gave his life to Jesus. Praise the Lord, praise God. Yes, in our journey, when we are walking with our holy God, there will be some days we will feel strong in our faith, but maybe other days we'll feel weak. So we need to be humble and honest with God, knowing that God is more than able to help us at any time we need. Amen. The third symbolic act was the book in verse 7. Moses read the book of the covenant to the people. This book is the oldest record of, we have of Jewish law. All the decrees written in the book rest on the authority of God. Also, Moses was very careful about writing down everything the Lord told him. Moses was a very good steward of all the revelation God entrusted him with. This inspired us to be good stewards of God's word too. Through the new covenant of grace, God's law is written on our hearts through the Holy Spirit. It's no longer written on tablets of stone, but God has also given us his written word in the Bible where we can remind ourselves of his promises to us. It's vital for us to spend time reading and studying the Bible. The word of God is alive. It feeds and nourishes our souls and spirit. It is truly food from heaven. I always remember what a friend told me. The Bible will keep you away from sin. All sin will keep you away from the Bible. And through my journey as a believer in Jesus, I found this to be so true. Let's be inspired to look at our Bible as the essential food we need daily to keep us strong in our walk in holiness with our Holy Father. Finally, the fourth symbolic act Moses performed when sealing the agreement between God and his people was communion. Verses 10 and 11. Moses, together with Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel, had a covenant meal in the presence of God. Verses 10 and 11 are just mind-blowing. They saw God, they ate, they drank, and they lived to tell the story. Amazing. With this meal, they were finalizing the agreement made by the two parties. It was almost as if they were celebrating the fact that the agreement had been reached. It was done. It was sealed. On the other hand, communion with God under the new covenant looks very different from the old covenant. We are invited to be partakers of another meal. In Luke chapter 22 verses 19 and 20 says, And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Jesus held a last meal with his disciples before the cross. He introduced for the first time a new meaning for two very familiar contents of the Passover meal. The bread now was a symbol of his body broken on the cross for us. And the wine was now a symbol of his blood shared sacrificially for us. 
With his blood, Jesus sealed God's new covenant with all those who believe in the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross. It's done. It's finished. Amen. And today, Jesus is inviting us to share this meal with him. He has done his part on the cross. Now, our part is to accept him and walk with him. It's at the cross that our daily walk in holiness starts. And it is through the cross that we receive forgiveness, grace and power to continue our whole walk with our holy God. Amen. If you are walking in purity and holiness with the Lord, I encourage you to continue doing so and go from strength to strength. But if for some reason you know you have left God's communion and you find yourself walking away from the Lord, or maybe you have sinned against God, I want to encourage you to come back to the Lord. Ask for forgiveness and start again your walk with your Holy Father. He is waiting for you to join Him in this amazing journey to our promised land. Amen. God bless you and keep you.